bow down our heart. Father, Lord, we, we thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you all the adoration. We magnify your holy and mighty name. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for showing us mercy. Where we are not obedient enough, you have always been loving, merciful, and kind to us. We appreciate you. In today's ministration, O oh Lord God, grant us access to your word. Grant us wisdom. The mystery of your words, O oh Lord God, interpret them, O oh Lord. Send Holy Spirit to fill us up right now, to have infilling of the Holy Spirit, to understand the mystery of the word of the Most High God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Happy Sunday, everyone. Have a happy Sunday. Praise the Lord. Um, the, the topic of today is going to be prayers. Part two, prayers. Why are you praying, sir? You say something. Yes. Why have we not been yes. obedient? Yeah, where we've not been where we've not been obedient, he's been so merciful because we we saw in the old testament the way it is very um it, 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 when, once someone it's commits sin judgment. it is instant it's judgment so grace yeah so he's been giving us the 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 grace and he's been merciful to us it to is. continue long rope you understand to, and the long rope is to to repent and to repent time to Re, uh, readjust our ways and our attitude. In in those days, it doesn't give them that time. It is an instant judgment. He he didn't spare Moses. He didn't spare Aaron. That he used to deliver the the people, uh, his own people in 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 Egypt. Remember, only one person entered Egypt. A nation came out of it, and he led them to the promised land. He said. I will, I will, I will take. I said, tell Pharaoh to 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 release my people so that they can worship me. So he led them through the wilderness, and during the wilderness, during the wilderness time, he he gave them orientation of who he is. Praise the Lord. He gave them orientation of who he is because in the fourth place he said they don't know him, and the world does not know know God. He said, I want the world to know the God in heaven. Hence, he created and picked these people to showcase and to make a legacy of his name. Praise the Lord. And then he showed us in the Old Testament, if you've been reading your Old Testament very well, you will know that they were, it was the period of instant judgment. Instant judgment means that once they committed any atrocity, they, they, get, the, they get the consequence straight away. And oftentimes it's mostly it's mostly death, and it, it doesn't it doesn't take him any it doesn't take him any anything or 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 or, or twinkle of an eye to 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 perform or send down his wrath on some group of people. At some point, he, 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 he sent plates in the midst of of his own children and and wiped away almost 20, 24, 000. 24,000 people were wiped away during during the period of um, um, Balak and Dela uh, when they were deceived following the the vows and then and then God sent plague into the midst of of the children until they identify their mistakes look at it now he didn't tell them how they're going to do anything until they requested wisdom they they went back to god and asked her why is this happening why this take away this plate and then they realized that some of their leaders have been going or doing a lottery with the children of the amalekites you understand and then that was when the plague stopped but before it the plague stopped 24 people 24,000 people already were there. So during that time, it was an instant judgment. So the journey of their life during that period was ruled by God with a strong, 
a very strong hand, a very strong hand. But um, glory be to the Most High God with his compassion in our era that he sent us his only begotten son to, to atone for our sins, whereby we can, we can apply the blood of Jesus upon our sins and our sins will be wiped away, provided we don't do it again. Praise the Lord. Provided we do not go back to our own format, that sins will be wiped away. It will not be in the way of judgment for us when we are when 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 judgment comes. However, the consequences of it we don't we are not spared. Hello, for every sins a man can commit, the consequences and the problem is that we don't and we they don't preach to us the difference between the consequences. And the sin. Mm. They did been we were being told the consequences of sins, and then the sin itself. Maybe the world will be a better place than it is now, because when you sin and you you are you are, God help you that you are on God's side, or you believe in you 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 trust in the Lord. And yeah. then you you committed a sin during the journey of life. You remember this is a journey of life. Is a life is a journey. Life is a journey. So when you commit sin, and then in those days in the in the Old Testament, according to what we is, yeah, it was like an instant judgment, and God doesn't spare anyone. But through the special blood of Jesus, God starts sparing us, giving us time. You remember. He, he, Jesus Christ said on the cross of Calvary, he said, Father, I said, I have seen, I've been in the midst of these people. They don't know what they are doing. Mercy on them. He pleaded for us. You understand? He said, I have been among them from, from day one. I have realized that these people, even for them to be crucifying me on the, on the cross, hanging me on the cross, it's like they don't even know what they are doing. So from there we have a leverage. From there we have um, a opportunity to plead the blood of Jesus anytime we committed atrocity or sin. Provided I always, I always emphasize that. Provided we don't go back to that old vomit. Provided we don't do it again. But the consequences of it, the consequences of it is still valid it's still there it will, and in fact it will be coming the consequences is different from the wages of it the wages of sin is death but the the um um, um the repercussion of the of that sin is a, is, a, is a, so the best thing is not to even double into it the best thing is not to even attempt it because it will come god said that God told them in the book of Exodus when they when they offended him. He said, Moses, tell them, I've forgiven them, but let them know that there will be a time that I will come to visit the iniqu their iniquities. So oftentimes he comes to visit those iniquities. And he what he was what he was looking for is to see whether we are still we are back into that old format. But when he comes to ask for that iniquities or the trespasses, all we need now, according to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, is to be asking for mercy. Praise the Lord. You know, they, you are asking for mercy, but not because you are committing the sins um, 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 at that particular time, or you are still in that, but you, what you have done, and that is why we raise this prayer all the time that, Oh Lord God, do not let the, the, the sins of my youth be in my way of progress or be in my way of advancement. There's a reason for that. Because all those things allows people, allow some wicked powers to be at the junction of breakthroughs. You can't take them away if you don't ask for mercy. Hello? Your, the, the, the authority to be at the junction of that breakthrough, you cannot change it. It is a law. Hello? 
as they are accusing, they are accusing a uh, brethren continuously. And Satan is pleasing his own um, pawns, his own demons at the strategic places. Likewise, God has got his own angels that you need to be on God's side for the angels to defend you. God will send angel to bear you on their palm such that you will not strike your foot against stone. It is real. That is part of journey of life. First John 5, 11 say, and this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son. The life is in his son. That son is Jesus Christ. He gave up his life as a living sacrifice for us not to start killing goats, killing bulls for the atonement of our sin. Rather, he gave us his life and he, sh and, and he shed that blood as a living sacrifice that you and I can, uh, can apply all the time to our sins and then our sins will be wiped away. God will not be whole sin. He said, I am holy. I cannot be whole sin. But once you are on God's side, you make Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, not your pastor, not any power, not any entity, but the Almighty Jesus. You are you are you are in Jesus. Jesus is in God. God will not see your sin. God will see the sacrifice that He that He that He shed that He made for you and I to atone for our sin. He said uh, that God has brought him, according to the book of Ephesians, book of Ephesians, let us all open our Bible to the book of Ephesians, where we will read, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Book of Ephesians, from, from verse 1. Ephesians, one. E Ephesians chapter 1, rather. Chapter 1. Verse 20. Yeah. But for us to understand it very well, verse 20 is where I'm going. But for us to understand it very well, let us start from verse 15. He said, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, this is this is Apostle Paul now speaking to the people in Ephesus. Therefore, I also. After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his coming. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Verse 19. And what is the, and what, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? You get it now. According for the working of his mighty power. Verse 20 now, which, where I want to actually, the which he worked, the mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So he's, he sat him down on his right side at the heavenly places such that when the accusers of brethren comes, the we have the advocate in heaven that will say, Father, I've paid for the price of this, of this your daughter, of this your son. I've, pray, I've, I've, I've paid for the sin. Though the wages of sin, we have to pay for it. You understand? But he said that I've paid for it, Father. So don't behold the sin. Behold the blood that I shed on the Calvary, and God will be at peace with that person. Then there's still more work to do. The next thing to do is you are abstaining from that sin, not going near that sin again, not going near the vomit again. That is the that is the brilliancy of the of the power that God has given to him. The, 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 the verse nineteen, 
part two of it, said, according to the working of his mighty power. That is the power that he has given to you and I. That we, once we are unable to go back, we've locked, we, 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 took, we, we lock the key and we, we throw the key of that sin. We throw it away into the ocean that we cannot retrie retrieve it again. Then him, Christ Jesus, sitting at Almighty God right side, will be advocating for us that, oh, Father, this man, he's not committing, I mean, the, the sin, um, He's not committing it again. I've I've paid for the I've, I've paid I've paid for the for the price of his sin. Have mercy upon him, and God will have mercy. He is advocating. It's just like uh, our normal day life, and um, when someone commits sin and you and you are charged to court, and then you have a lawyer that is advocating for you before the judge. You understand? So uh, look on that scenario and see the great work that. Our Lord God has given unto us. Praise the Lord. So the journey of life is very, very important. And prayers guides us through. But what are you praying about? You need to know what you are praying about. And as, as you are praying, you know you're now having wisdom. You're having knowledge of the of the of the supreme God. Because your prayer is communicating with Him. Once you involve God in your no more chat, you are praying. Hello. The moment you are talking and you switch to referring the way you talk to God, that's your prayer. Hello. Are we getting somewhere? So when you the scenario is this. Um, ah, let me see. I just want to simplify it for, for our children so that uh, they will understand what prayer is that um, um god is not expecting us to to be in a special place before you communicate with him your communication with god is your prayer your and he will listen to you you are talking to your friend about an incident that happened and you felt so remorse and then all of a sudden, he said, oh, oh, God. Ah. Did you hear that? Oh, God. Please, let those people, maybe you heard of a disaster that happened somewhere. You had saying that, ah, did you see what happened in that country? Many people there, many people are dying. And a lot, uh, the, the nature was, uh, and he said, oh, oh, Lord, um, save, save, let, let them find Many, many people save them, oh Lord, and bless them. Oh, oh, let me just give you an example. Maybe what is happening in, in Israel now. And then you just, all of a sudden, they are talking about, oh, why this one is it? This one is right. That one, but you now say, oh God, minister to the heart of both, both parties. Let them stop killing each other. Let your peace reign in this region, you know? All of a sudden, you know, you're in the midst of discussion with your friend. And then you just decide to, I think, God, ah, bring peace in this region. Is that pray? That's your prayer. That is your prayer, irregardless of where you are, irregardless of what. And God will listen. You understand? Say, God, take away the heart of flesh from the heart of these people. I mean, the heart of stone, take it away. Put your heart into them, the heart of peace. Put the heart of peace in these people. Remove the turbulence and troubles from this region. Let the world know that you are almighty God. You're already praying. And he's listening. That's your prayer. Oh, concerning your exam. Oh, the exam didn't go well. You dropped your pen. Boom. Everybody starts saying, "Oh, it should be, it should be A." Ah, no, 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 no. It is number two. It is B. Ah, number two question. Did you say? Oh, it, it was a very trickish one. Then after the whole thing, he said, oh, "God, let your will be done. Grant me grace in this exam. Let me pass it. I know I've not done very well. I've not done my best. But put your best upon my weakness." You see, 
you're already communicating, even right in front of your friends. And that is where you will see that your results will just come and you'll be like, really? I did it. I thought I, I thought I failed that exam. I thought I failed that exam. And you just see that you, your result came out perfectly and excellent. Or concerning a job, you, you are looking forward for a promotion. And all of a sudden, you've been waiting for many years and then it just came. Boom. Like that. He said, wow. Or maybe you've been waiting. He said, ah, man, I just hope that some, your, 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 those one on the right, they have been promoted. The one on the left have been promoted. And then one day, you just, ah, oh, God, man, shower your favor on me as well. Let me also be favored. You are praying. And you will just see one day, another company will just come by you. And they say, do you fancy working with us? We will double your money you are getting here. It's the grace of God. It happens to people. They are testimonies of people I'm, I'm sharing with them. God will just elevate them. It's, it's, part of, it's part of your prayers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, so, um, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. That is 1 Peter, verse 1. Apostle of Jesus. So those who are elect exile of dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and uh, Britannia, according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You can see the journey of life, these apostles are praying for people all over the area. This is where this is the period whereby they were scattered all over the world. They were they were scattered. And many are in Asia, many are in Britain, many are in Europe. But the prayers, your prayer goes wild. We 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 tend to we tend to come our prayers to our environment alone. Prayers are meant to, in your prayer time, you can pray for anyone. Jesus Christ even um, said, said, pray for your enemies, which is very difficult though, but, but it, it, it works, brethren. So pray for your enemies. You get it now. Pray for your enemies. That is a command. So your prayers goes beyond yourself and it brings you peace. Look at it this way. When you pray for your enemies, your enemies will, will, will have a change of heart and they will let you be. Or even your prayers will be like a shame on top of you, on, on the neck of your prayers. Because, or, I mean, on the, on the neck of your enemies, sorry to say. You understand? It will be a shame on the neck of your enemies when you are praying for your enemies. Because why? God will vindicate you. Will look into the conflict and say and 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 grant you justice. That is the importance of prayers. So prayers goes beyond what many people are just um, blabbing. They will say pray in pray in spirit pray in this, and then they will start blabbing. No, your prayer in spirit is you communicating with the heavenlies without any diversion. That is when you are praying in spirit. Without any diversion. In prayers, you, you and I will agree that there has been so many occasions whereby the heart wanders. This happens to everyone, even the pastors, even the bishops. Even this, even the apostles as well. 
but whereby you are able to pray in spirit, that is, you are praying without any break of wandering of heart. That is praying in spirit. Devoted. You are linked up to the heavenless. Praise the Lord. You are what? You are linked up with the heavenless, such that no, no interruption. But how do you go about your prayers? We we read last week about the 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 um template that our Lord Jesus Christ gave to give to the disciple when and when when we say when we say oh they were saying that oh how do we pray and then Jesus Christ decided to teach them how to pray praise the Lord but there is one significant thing that you should understand when you are praying that is. You need to confess your sins. You understand me now? Purge yourself. Purge yourself from sin. You need to purge yourself from sin. Because why? It is the prayers of the righteous person that has a greater power. The prayers, when you are praying, it is from the angle of your, of your righteousness that your prayer is effective. Example. From the scenarios that I've, that I, um, I gave previous previously, let's say you are praying for what is going on in the region in Israel and uh, this Palestinian. From your angle of um, um, not being judgmental, your from your angle of not being looking, not being siding one place, but you are on the path of peace. That is your angle of righteousness. And that prayer is, is effective. Okay, let me let me explain it to you. Then I will say that because I'm a Christian now, then I will have to defend the Israelites. And I say that, oh, eh, kill all the Palestinians and this and that. And then I run you up in Jesus' name. That's not that's not a righteous prayer. The fact that God said that we should pray for the peace of Israel or the Israelite does not um, does not uh, give us the opportunity for us to be um, um, let me say to be looking for destruction. Your prayer is not when the moment you start putting destruction in your prayers, it, you are not praying from or you are putting partiality. Uh, it's not from angle of righteousness you are you are only blabbing you are only praying without any guidance because you siding alone is already a sin so you are praying from the angle of of being partial of being that's a, that's another sin so it's not effective but when you see it such that those the other party to their human being and then these people also they are the people you love. You want peace to reign such that life of people will not be in jeopardy. Are you getting it now? That is the angle of righteousness that I want to explain. I don't know whether you, you get those, I mean, the scenario that I've just given. So, that and that is why um, our Lord Jesus said that we should pray for our enemies and we pray for our friends as well. Praise the Lord. Because why? The Spirit itself we help our weakness for we do not know what to pray for as we ought but the spirit himself interceded so the another thing is that when you confess your sins the spirit takes control the spirit takes control and gives you the wisdom of prayers because we do not know what to pray for but when you decided to put yourself out from all the sins you are you are praying from the from the angle of righteousness. The spirit itself will 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 intercede. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The, the spirit himself will intercede according to the according to the book of Ephesians chapter six verse eighteen. It says praying at all times in spirit with all prayers and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all saints, for all saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Making supplication for all saints. 
Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helped us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit himself interceded for us with groaning too deep for words. Praise the Lord. The prayer that you're supposed to, the prayer of the righteousness that you are supposed to pray for, the Spirit himself will minister it into your heart when you purge yourself of sins. Are you getting it now? Are we, get, are we learning something? Are you get are you are you are you get so when you when you are talking and all of a sudden you just switch to the to the to 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 talk to God that is your prayer why the book of Psalm 145 verse 18 says that the Lord is near to all who call on him our God is near to those who call on him to all who call on him in truth not just calling on him but calling on him in truth that is you've purged away all your sins that is that this that's why i said that the ministration of today is going to be part two of of um last week because all these were not included in last week because prayer um, when you want to do prayer say uh, prayer sermon is so wild is so it, it is Another, another, another preacher will take it from another angle, and it will still the whole thing will still be the same. But I want, I don't want to go in the ways that we have been hearing all all our years long. I want to take it from the from another angle that we're not being exploited, and the angle that we're not being exploited is from the angle of righteousness, purging yourself of the sins within you. And to pray from the angle of righteousness, not angle of bias, not angle of being partial, even not angle of enmity, not angle of uh, enemy must die, die, die. No, 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 no. It is not, it is not from that angle that our prayer being held. Oftentimes you will see that the prayer of die, 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 man, nobody dies. God will not kill anybody for one person. It is between him and God. If God decided to let or to take that person out from the, it, 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 it means that the cup of that person has really been full. Because God will always give us a leeway, will give us opportunity or uh, time to repent from our sins. Whatever that person is doing, God still wants, he doesn't, the Bible said that God does not want the, the, the death of a sinner, but for him to repent. You praying for your enemies to repent, you are praying from the angle of righteousness and God Almighty will, 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 will hearken to your prayers. Praise the Lord. He's our, he's our God. There is no other there is no other person or God that can be so merciful like him. In the past, he was not merciful to his people in that when they commit sins, instant judgment. But now, the mercy, the grace of God. But are we now going to be saying that that grace, we have to be, we have to be manipulating the grace or, 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 or to to be trampled upon it. The book of Ephesians said, God forbid. Praise the Lord. God forbid. So, in the book of Matthew chapter 6, from verse 5, said, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. This is another section now. When you pray, do not be like hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogue. Do not, when you are praying, it is not, it is not, it is not for everybody to see or to know that you are praying. You start praying, and the the whole the whole um, neighbors were were angry with you. No, that is hypocritical. You cannot you cannot be praying and be disturbing others. In, as a matter of fact, your if your prayer partner happens to be your wife or your husband, when the Holy Spirit ministered to you to pray middle of the night and your 
prayer partner is sleeping, your prayer when you are you are you are couple you are you are sleeping, your prayers must not disturb. Hello, Do that, should I say that again? Your prayers must not disturb. That is, all of a sudden, you are being woken up, but you don't know what what it was, but you realize that you were just woken up. And you are and you realize that you are sweating. That is, you have you are in a battle in this in the realm of the spirit, and you woke up all of a sudden in the middle of the night, and the Holy Spirit ministered to you to pray, which happens to true Christians oftentimes. Prevention something happening in another hemisphere that you are the one that needs to be called upon to intercede at that particular time. What I'm trying to tell you and what the, the, the what the Bible is telling us is that your prayers must not be hypocritical. The person beside you at that particular time must not be disturbed. It's not that it's the time you have to you now and you have to go and carry and um, you have to go and carry the bell. Bang down, bang down, and your neighbors are sleeping. Bang down, bang down. No, 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 no. You don't, then the, everybody knows that at that time you are praying. No, you don't have to. It could be a solemn prayer. God can hear you, even you not opening your mouth. When you are praying within, when you are praying a silent prayers, God still hears you. You know the atmosphere you are. You are at work. You want people to know that you are holier than thou. That is hypocrite. No. That is not the prayers that are. There are so many different ways of, of praying. You know, I told you earlier on, you can be in the midst of your friends poking, and all of a sudden you switch. It's a short prayer. A concerning the scenario in front of all of you. Ah, God, help these people. Oh, or something just happened. In, oh, God, ah, intervene in the life of these people. And that's it. But it is not that, oh, no, 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 no. no. You start screaming on top of your voices in early in the morning that your, your neighbors are disturbed. No, that is not it. That is not the way we are being ask to be praying. You understand? He said, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and to the street corners that they may be seen by others. There is no reward in that. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret concerning a particular issue. This one is different. This one is you want to you want to seek the face of God, and when you do this one, and it doesn't work when you do this one. But when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. If that doesn't work, brethren, then it means that you need to add fasting. And in your fasting, people must not know that you are fasting as well because remember that word hypocrite don't be hypocrite in your prayers or with your communication with god there are open prayers but there are closed door prayers concerning a particular prayers you need a special approach regarding and concerning remember esther concerning that particular issues at that time she thought it is paramount for her to go into fasting before she approached the king. It is not the answer of the king that that's why she went. That is not because of the king that's why she went into that fasting, but that God in heaven to minister into the heart of that, into the heart of that king. Esther herself realizes her weakness that. Talking, no matter how beautiful she might be, no matter how love the king, my love, my love. After all, the king demoted the first wife. So for her to now pleaded her case, 
she needs God to intervene into the heart of that king. That one was a special prayer. You know, I've explained a different level of prayers now. There are prayers whereby I said you can pray anywhere. It's just communication, you and God, concerning a particular thing. But let it be from the animal righteousness. Hold yourself away from sin. Always observe throughout your day that you are not committing sins. Be Christ-like. Then your, ask, your prayers will be answered speedily. Those are the things that brings fast results of prayers. Praying from the angle of righteousness. Praise the Lord. This one in the book of Matthew chapter 6 is another warning of some of you, you must have come across them that prays such that the whole world knows that they are praying, that everybody around them knows that they are praying. No, 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 no. That is not what he said. And your father who sees in secret will reward you when you pray in, in secret. Your father who sees in secret, he sees you in secret, he sees you when you are in the open, but he will reward you. And when you pray, do not um, heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. Hang empty phrases. What are the empty phrases? What are the empty em Empty phrases can be, let us dissect it because I like it. This is about praise. And that is why I picked this chapter so that we can analyze it one by one. You understand? The key words in this, in this chapter. The key words in this chapter, let us let us dissect it and, and learn from it. What are the what are these heap empty phrases? Matthew chapter 6, from verse 5 to 13. Yeah. So when 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 and when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases. If you if you hype up empty um, um, phrases, that is not edifying. And there are some certain people that does that. And the Bible attributes, I mean, said that they are, they are Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? That is, we, we are the Gentiles. We are the ones that we know how we, we want to show off so that the, everybody knows that we are praying. Everybody should know that we are fasting. Nothing will be done. Everything around you have to cease because, oh, there's a special prayer going on. No, 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 no. Do you hear that? He said, when you want to pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your father who is in secret. This technically means that not all the time you have to shut the door. You don't have to shut the door if you're alone, number one. If you know that a lot of people are around you and things need to, intersection needs to be taking place faster, you go into your room, lock the door, Intercede for the for the occasion. Intercede for that moment. Intercede for that person. Intercede for the brethren. Intercede for the nation. Intercede for people far away. Remember the book of uh, First Peter. Praying for people in Asia. Praying for people in in Britain. People in Europe. People in in another part of the world where they scatter their loved ones. When you are praying, remember your family, both in Nigeria, both in America, both in, uh, in, in other parts of the world. You pray for them when you have the time. You do have the time because you remember you pray five times a day. Praise the Lord. You pray five times. Christians are to be praying five times a day, just like the Muslim. I've been saying this. I don't know whether many people, even your pastors know, your pastors pray constantly. A pastor that does not pray constantly, then they are, they, he is not a pastor. Are you getting it now? But your your time of prayers it, it should not inter, it should not disturb your work. It should not disturb your active your daily activity. It should not disturb if it is only one minute or five minutes. You have the opportunity. Everyone at their workplaces or in their daily activities they have one or two times to rest and in, in fact if you are working every 15 minutes 
I mean, in a, a, within an hour, you are to get 15 minutes rest as your job allows. But if the job cannot allow 15 minutes, you can also have some break during your break time. You can have words with God concerning um, any situation, even if to just praise him, even if to just thank him, that, oh Lord, I thank you for a wonderful day that you have given to me. I bless your holy name. You are the almighty God. I reverence you. I reverence you. I acknowledge you in everything that I am doing. Maybe you remember a situation, you put the situation in it. You've exalted him. Just the template of our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. You've used that opportunity to do it. Then present your case and then round it up in Jesus' name. Because without him, there is no answered prayers. You get it now. You round it up always in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. I pray. You understand? So, verse, as, as we are, as we are, we are, we are um, still on Matthew chapter 6 from verse 5 to 13. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles. Yes. And, and, uh, uh, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. It's an advice. Do not be like them. We are the Gentiles. We like to we like to show off. Yeah, you, yeah, that nobody understands that. Do you think that God to make your but say, present your case? The Bible said, present your case. Say, come, come, let us reason together. So do you want to do you want to reason with God with empty phrases? When God calls you that come, my son, come, my daughter, what is worrying you? I want, I want to, I want you to explain yourself to me. What is that issue? What is so heavy in your heart? Then you go there, you start, yem bro koto koto. What is that? What is that? You're not presenting anything. And hence, no answer. And you are wondering, oh, I'm, and then, oh, the next thing you will hear, oh, I'm tired. I've just been praying. I'm a Christian. And they said, some will say, oh, I'm tired of this God. Of you, of course, he too is tired of you. Because you don't present your case. You've just been entertaining yourself. Now, what is that? Present your case. Father, I lift up my hands unto you. Let it be a sudden sacrifice before thee. I hallow you. I hold you in high esteem. All my worries, I lay them before your throne. Take away this yoke. In Jesus' mighty name. You really say. You've presented. You presented your case. And it's not that you were screaming and shouting. The effective prayers of the righteous. Avail it much. Brethren, it avail it much. Praise the Lord. Your father knows that you need before you ask him. That is another thing I want you to understand. Your father in heaven knows that you are in need of that thing. Pray then like this, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You are praising him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Did you, did you, did you understand everything, the guidance of prayers? Why do I have to go here um, is I was reading the book of Ephesians and I realized that um, when we when we ought to pray, we sometimes lack that spiritual wisdom in approaching prayers. 
and that is why I came out to do this second part of, of the how to pray or prayers, part of, of the steadfastness for us to obtain or gain more from our prayers. Our communication with God is our prayers. Our communication with mankind is just a dialogue. Hello. Our communication with God is our prayers. Our communication with mankind is just our dialogue. But even with our dialogue with our friends and our colleagues or in our secular life, if we don't make sense, they will tell you that you are not making sense. Isn't it? When we are discussing, when we are talking to one another, they will say, oh, what you are saying, it doesn't make sense. Or they will say, what you are saying, oh, there's a lie. You are lying. Some people will say, oh, that cannot be true. But when you are dialoguing with God, the same thing happens. Oh. The same thing happens. You cannot go and slap somebody and say, God, you see, you, did, you, did you see her? She was the one that first slapped me. Oh. Kill her for me. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> I'm simplifying it for you so that you can learn from me. You have to put yourself from sin. Once you put yourself from sins, then you are praying from the angle of righteousness. How do you put yourself from sins? Confess your sin and apply the special blood of Jesus to wash you from head to sin, to toe, such that you would be holy and presentable before God. That you say that God have mercy upon me. Are you getting it? That God have mercy upon me. I'm coming before thee in the simplicity of heart. Have mercy upon me. I reference you. You praise him. You hallow him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, verse 18 of Ephesians um, chapter 1. He said, in, in the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, let your eyes of understanding to be enlightened. It is paramount for us to do this that we may be enlightened in what? In our relationship with God, in our relationship to the calling with which we have been given. Because for you to be in Christ, it is a calling. You, are, you have something to do. God knows those who he calls and he calls them for a purpose. For the purpose that you are called, let your understanding be enlightened that the hope of your calling will shine and help mankind. Praise the Lord. So in this manner, in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, say, in this manner, I like that. When the Bible tells us that in this manner is the way we should pray, then we shouldn't, we shouldn't be struggling. But because we because of lack of knowledge, it, 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 it might be so that we might struggle. You understand? It might be so that we might struggle. And that is why our Lord Jesus Christ taught us how to pray. You understand me now? He taught us how to say, therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have in need of before you ask him. The prayer you want to pray, he, he laid it in your heart to, to pray it. He knows that he's waiting for you. How? Then you say that, oh, how could that be true? Why is he waiting? Oh, that is why he raised intercessor. If God doesn't, if God doesn't know, then he there's no, the word intercessors will not come up or will, will, be a, um, will not be valid. He wants us to pray for one another. It's part of harmonizing the world together. When the Israelites start looking after the Palestinians and Palestinians start looking after the Israelites, the world will be at peace. When the Arab countries remember that they are brothers and sisters, then the world will be at peace when they are praying for one another, eradicating the hatred, not allowing the 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 power of 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 some people that have been um um they have been possessed by Satan and and saying that a whole country should be eradicated, then that is a power. Then you want to intercede and pray that, that God should take 
that heart of stone from that person and replace it with heart of peace, with the heart of flesh, uh, with the heart of flesh, with, like um, to, with with the heart of 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 Christ, such that peace will reign in that region. God does not want anyone to to die. God does not want anyone to be um, um, decapitated and 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 displaced. God want peace. And I pray that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will come and engulf our life, our workplaces, our region, our home, our marriage, our, our, our even our children, education, our children, journey of life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, have a wonderful and um, blessed weekend. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.